gentlemen, we're here today, we're going to work on two amps from my friend Mr. R. This is an older number uh, master class build. And it's got several pop transistors in it, I think. Let's go in here and we'll take a look for here. We're just going to use the FLIR to diagnose this quickly because I want to jump onto the other one and see what's going on. Hello. You see those two transistors heating and these are dead. They're not doing anything. These are getting warm. So these two transistors are dead. The thing that I find is interesting is the 10 ohm resistors for these pills have been replaced. And I don't know if that means the transistors have been replaced or if it's just the resistors that have been replaced. We'll find out. My balancing resistor is getting hotter than Well, you can see it, it's discolored. So it's, it's been warm. But we're going to rip this apart. Let me grab the other amp, which is a 16 pill. And uh, we're going to take a quick look at it. But for right now, we know that we got two dead, two dead transistors in this thing. So let's hurriedly check this out and move on to the, the repair portion, I think. Let me get on to the 16 pill. So this is an old X-Force cabinet that I've been in a long time ago. I sold this to my friend and it's obviously been popped since I sold it to him and he's taken it to somebody else and they've gone through and done whatever to it. But um, whatever they did, they didn't do a very good repair job on this. And I think that's what caused all of our problems to start with. We're going to look at this resistor here that is let the flames out massively in a big order. This 100 ohmer here, right here. If we scroll over and we let ourselves look down in here and relax our eyes just for a minute, we'll take a look. This transistor is not soldered down. If it is, it's just barely. And the same thing with its partner transistor here. You can literally see around the tab. where they weren't soldered in properly. And this one here, it's got a burnt 10 ohm resistor. So then we come over here and we take a quick look at this. And I'm not in any way bashing anybody. But these are brand new Toshiba 1Ks. And we can see our 10 ohms have been replaced here. And our balancing resistor here has been replaced as well. We go to the other side, this one is burnt, but not nearly as bad. And then we can see that these 10 ohms have also been replaced and these two transistors have been replaced down in here. This is a different lot number. This is now 9H and the solder work is just, well, it is what it is. We're gonna scroll over here to this next four pill section um, this one's also been a part, it looks like. Please keep in mind I have a video of when it left here and it didn't look anything like this. It was pretty minty when it left here. This flyback is actually tied to this pad. It needs to be soldered here. So whoever did the repair on this section put the um, capacitor to the wrong pad so there's no flyback circuit here. I don't think we've got any pop pills in this section, but uh, as far as this going here, sorry, I don't, I don't think we have anything bad here yet, but we will eventually. This needs to get moved over to here where it needs to be. And uh, I have a feeling that the output disk capacitor, this yellow thing, and this yellow thing, and this yellow thing, and this yellow thing, I think they might have all gone bad or were on their way to going bad and that's what started a lot of this and so they just slapped new pills in it, did really really bad solder work. Like now there's a bunch of solder flick that's all over on the inside of this box. This is a good example of it. So we have the dull solder, it's really dull, this is all the pre-existing solder work. 
then we have this nice new shiny piece of solder that's sitting right here that's floating around inside this cabinet. You can see more of that evidence here. Let me unplug this real quick. We can see more evidence of that <clears throat> present here. Um, this isn't the right resistance. This isn't the right ohm load. Of course, that resistor could be broken, but for me looking at it two feet away and the camera all zoomed in, the coating might be broke off on that, but that looks like that's silver to me. Um, everywhere that there has been replacement solder work done in this amplifier, there is solder splash. For instance, this here, that's a nice little gem. Um, it wouldn't surprise me that there's solder underneath the transistors. When you see that kind of work, you know that somebody really rushed and they just didn't care. Um, I've got the same thing going on up here that I can see from here. The point is I've documented it now so we know what's going on. And uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I'm not going to even bother trying to run this. I was going to hook it up and run it, but it's pretty clear to me I've got to take this whole section apart and redo all the solder work over here anyhow. Um, I want to take this all apart clean it up and do it right. I do the same thing over here. And again, I got to do the same thing over here. I got to fix all this. I don't know why this all came apart. Somebody's taking this all apart. So we'll figure it out. We'll see how many transistors are popped once we get along here. But according to him, it wasn't even keying up. So that's what I was going to test because we're not going to hurt it any more than it is. He says it won't do anything. The on off power in LED on the front of this thing is busted. It's not doing anything at all. So I asked him specifically on the phone three times if the thing was hooked up backwards. He said no. Um, sometimes, and I'm not saying that's the situation here, and I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but sometimes the power switch will be on and they'll hook the amp up backwards. Well, that's a diode. And then we all know that if current get, or voltage and current gets applied to a diode backwards, it pops it, right? That, that sometimes is an indicator that the amp's been hooked up backwards. But the amplifier is keying, and it's trying to make power. So we're making about 200 watts, 150 watts worth of power with, oh, do you go, da about 20 watts going in. So this comes down to capacitors and transistors that we have managed to send on to God. And really what that falls down to is shitty solder work, solder splash, and people always change the, the transistors, but they never check the capacitors. So, okay, I gotta be very sensitive about how I handle this. I'm gonna have to call him on the phone now, tell him what I figured out, so. Okay, we'll be back. All right, got the tornado, <clears throat> or as my friend Raz, who's from Israel, refers to it, Tordor. Bad as vape dust, it just doesn't taste as good. All right, tornado love. Now, the inside of this thing, which used to be as shiny as a penny, we can start working. So good morning, it's Monday morning. And uh, 
spent all weekend fielding questions about those new switch modules. I spent probably 40 minutes on Saturday just picking little flicks of solder out of that 16 pill. So needless to say, I think that that might have had something to do with why it burned up, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go in here. We're going to rip this apart. We're going to pull both of these Toshibas out and we're going to find out why this side of the amplifier is not turning on. Okay, so let's start here. We got the two transistors out and I found this had floated underneath one of the legs of the transistor. Um, and this was actually in the pill pocket. That was sitting between the transistor and the heat sink. So, I, mm. and then I started looking at these two resistors and I went, wow, those are like 1K plus. I'm like, what are those? Me being lazy, I thought, well, I'll pull them out for cinematic viewing pleasure. Let's put our volt ohm meter in the picture here. These are supposed to be 10 ohm resistors. And I believe they're like 14K. Oh, this one's 15.35K. This is supposed to be 10 ohm, yo. So. That's probably a major portion of our problems. And that one is 15K. So, what would that be? Uh, 10, 15,000 times the resistance that we need completely wrong valued resistor. So we got that going on for us. Let's go over here, let's check out this transistor. This is the one the piece of solder was underneath. Let's test this here. Got a bit showing a short, which means this is bad. This one here has got a gain of, if anything, 16. So this is still technically a good transistor. Um, to save my friend the heartache, we're going to find him another transistor of the gain of 16. And uh, we're going to put it back in here and we're going to put 10 ohm resistors in a spot where they need to be, not 15K. So we're going to get rid of this. We're just going to throw this right into the, the bag of cancer causing beryllium based components. I learned something new last night. I was watching a, a YouTube channel last night and this guy was talking about uh, shot diodes or shock diodes or shock key diodes and how most diodes have a forward voltage of about either 0 0.06 or 0 0.03 and how he used his Atlas DCA Pro plugged into his computer and how he was doing a curve trace for leakage and breakdown voltages on the shot diodes so he could measure how they would affect the harmonic resonance of the audio that he was using them for in a foot pedal for a guitar. That made me go, wow, okay, so I can curve trace diodes. And then it clicked all in my head, duh, hello. It never ends. This little device, you know, it's pretty interesting. Um, the critical hate chasers on Facebook, um, the self-appointed know-it-alls, they, they like to point out that this thing doesn't give you a very accurate gain number because it's voltage in its battery is so low. And I'm like, okay. Um, I'm at the point now where I want to kind of do a little bit of a test video because I have a feeling this has got an internal uh, rectifier circuit and it kicks the voltage up to whatever the component needs. I only say that because when you put the device on a curve trace, 
Um, it definitely kicks a voltage up closer to 12. So, uh, hey, just because the battery's at one voltage doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the component puts out. Of course, I've never bothered to read it, which I guess I should do someday. But this device, it, it blows my mind, all the different stuff you can check with just this one little $100 piece of equipment. It's cheap, yes. It's not a thousand percent accurate. I'll give it that. It's enough for what we do with it, right? And for the home gamer that's only going to do is transistors maybe two or three times, I would never tell that home gamer to go spend $2,000 on a transistor tester and everything else is crap. So just saying, still cool in my book. Still cool in my book. All right, let's get this thing put back together. Okay, so a couple things. You see these three little pieces of solder here? I pulled those out of the pill pocket. They were also underneath the transistor. So we got these two little flakes out of the pill pocket and around the transistor and these. So this was underneath the transistor and all of this mess was underneath the transistor. Went and thoroughly cleaned it out. <clears throat> also went ahead and I replaced the pill screws. I don't know if you guys get this or not, but you know, head bolts on let's say like a 60 Ford and some other kind of cars, vehicles, the head bolts, they stretch. They're a one-time use bolt, right? Well, transistor screws are so small and are made of such soft material that they stretch, right? So we don't, we try not to reuse those if all possible. That and after about one or two times going in and out of the pill pocket, the threads get all full of aluminum and they gall up and they'll cause you to actually wear the hole out faster. So I try to tell everybody, and I thought I'd pointed this out enough, but I guess not, not in this situation. If you're gonna change your own transistors, do yourself the favor and just buy a bag of um, 440 screws and change them out. Okay, uh, see we put two, we put the new transistor in, all new thermal compound, resoldered everything, put in new 10 ohm resistors, not 15K. I have a feeling that this is gonna work flawlessly, so. But if it doesn't, hey, whatever, we'll figure it out. Um, let's see here. We'll start off with the derail striker. Derail striker. Bum, 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 bum. Turn this on. We're on 1X. We're on 12 volts. Striker on. Amp off. Hello, audio. We'll talk through it. Hello, hello, hello. Pass through tune's perfect. Amplifier on. Oh, we're on sideband. Hello, audio. So, look at that. that voltage is way low. 1222. Dropping down to 11. Hello, audio. Well, those batteries are five, six years old. So, it's working. Hello, one, two, one, two. Let's go up here. Let's take a look at the input tune on this thing real fast. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two. 600 watts on 12 volts or less. I'll let the batteries come up here for a minute. We'll push ourselves on up to, set this right around 15. So, and they are drinking. There we go, 15. Hello, audio. 450, almost 500 bird. Swing into a thousand watts. Good input tune, good pass through tune. 
this thing's working just fine. Okay, so let me get out the can of clear and we'll go. Ch -ch -ch. I'll put the lid back on it. This one's fixed. So we'll clean up, reset the workbench, and we'll start into the 16 pill. Back and forth with the bullshit. All right, brand new paper towel, different amp. See all this metal that I picked out of here? Some of it came out of here. A lot of it came out of here. And from this angle, you can clearly see where the soldering iron did not solder down this transistor. <laughs> so it came out from around here and you still see a couple flicks like this one here I haven't dug out. Some of it come out from over here and some of it come out from over here. So we can tell just by looking at it, if you'll choose to focus, there we go, freaking camera. These were all originally 1Ls. That's a 1L, 1L, 1L. When I sold this amp to my friend, they, it was a match set of transistors. So these two have been changed. God, the solder in that one even looks, the solder in that one even looks rough. These two have been changed. These two have been changed. Over here, these two have been changed. And this one on the far end has been changed. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but that's the way I received this component. The flyback's not hooked up in the right spot. So I have a feeling that when we go and we tear this two pill section apart, we're going to find shit underneath the transistors, which is fine. Not a big deal. I'm not going to get too excited about it. We're just going to fix the problem. Um, we got to do two 10 ohmers here for sure. And over here, this 10 ohm is discolored, not burnt yet. That might be a leftover from when they changed it. So we're going to go through or clean up solder joints just in this department and move this around. And then over here, we've got fried 10 ohm resistor. And this box is just taking a beating. It's like a Timex watch, man. We're just going to make it work again. So, I think, me personally, we've got about, let's see, one, two, three, four that I know are bad so far. And we're just going to work from that and we're going to work our way back. So, first things first, I'm going to go and I'm going to rip all of these resistors out. We're just going to start new and fresh. I want to disconnect each one of these capacitors and check them before I go and I tear this all apart. But the first thing I really want to do is I want to take the tornado to it and I want to L douche it, air douche it to be specific. See if we can get a little bit more of the solder flick to come out. Cause I mean, it's, you can't see it, but it's all over the sides of the transformers and everything. So. is just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a little bit of blue Windex and a little bit of water. That's all that's in that. Okay, so I got most of the most of the big crud out and proceeded to blow it all over my workbench. I got to stop here for a couple days, yo, and I've got to clean. This shop is little bits of wire and everything all over the floor. I got to, I got to scrub this bench. I mean, the dust is just I got too many different tools doing too many different things in this one space, so I got to take and wipe down the whole workbench, clean it all up. I got to dust. I got to vacuum, but not today. Probably do that tomorrow. For the moment, let's get all these little burnt parts out of here. I want to check these caps. 
put it back together. There's got to be a reason that these things keep blowing. This has come apart, that section's come apart, this section's come apart, and that section's come apart. So we have to question why at this point. Either the guy that owns this amp doesn't get it and he's driving it too hard, but he hits me as a very intelligent individual. And I'm sure he's listened to me when I told him what levels to drive this at. Like this should be a six, 700 watt dead key. The way he operates his radio, six, 700 watt dead key. That's it. Let it swing. I hope and I pray. This is another thing that came to mind. You see the second switch this year? The second switch is labeled as SSB. Now, I don't know, I haven't had a chance to ask him yet, <clears throat> but I'm a little concerned that maybe he's operating this thing on sideband. If that's the case, that would answer a lot of our questions, I think. So, all right. Let's tear it apart. Boogity, 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 boys. Let's push the soldering iron. Just did my second round of phone calls today. This has got me concerned. Just a little bit. I'll just slide that back over to them plates. We'll call it a win. All right. See what the survey says. One forty nine point eight. You, sir, get to stay. One fifty eight. Woof. <laughs> oh boy, howdy. Okay. Um, one forty five point seven. Sixty. Wow. Wow. All right, so we're changing all of those too. <laughs> Might as well just put new caps in that way. I don't have to worry about it. I mean, that's that's a huge variance. This one's one sixty. This is one sixty. This is one forty nine. This is one fifty seven. This is 150. We're just going to change all these caps. That way I never have to worry about it. Because if the little bit of temperature from the soldering iron, desoldering, just taking the component off the board is enough to make them go wacko like that. A little bit of temperature, a little bit of time operating in the real world. Values could be all over the place. So let's throw some metal clads in here. So I got to go build them. Yay. Pulled those two out. And they're over here. Ugh. I just keep finding more and more shit inside this box. Before I go and run it, I'm going to have to wash it. Let's figure out what's going on here. So I do believe this is the, <clears throat> the transistor that had the bad resistor. So, whoop. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Put this one here and that one there. The next batty whack, give a dog a bone. Gain of 17. So today's a 17 today. I don't got them backwards. God, so much thermal compound, darling. Jesus. Ever heard the phrase, a little dabble, do you? That's the bad one. Okay, so gain of 17 on this one here. So, now let's pull this section apart. Let's take a look here. 
<sighs> um, got all the metal clads installed. One there, one there, one there, and one there. The reason I like using the metal clads is they are a titch expensive. This is true. But they don't break down like these things do. What happens is if the amp gets overly hot more than a couple times, the chances are that these caps will break down and fail. Um, this is a Blue Label X-Force. And this is right before everything took the giant turn to the left and went to the shit bucket. So, it is what it is. We're here after the fact. This ran for a long time for another friend of mine in Hawaii. And, yeah. I got a couple questions that I'm going to ask this guy, and I'm pretty sure that, well, I don't know anything. I got a couple questions I want to ask this guy, so let's uh, let's get over here and let's pull this all apart, and we'll go from there. Okay, so these two, this is the one of the gain of 17. These two are out of that those two holes there, so. Let's go ahead, let's do a quick test here. Gain of 39. All right. And by the way, this is the two easiest transistors I've ever had to pull out of an amp. They were just barely hanging in there with it. Okay, that one's completely dead shorted. So, gain of 14 and a gain of 39. All right, well, our next step is we're gonna give this a bath. We're gonna give this old blue label a bath. Get the pill pockets cleaned out really well. Find us some matching transistors to drop back in these holes. We'll get our 10 ohmers replaced. Um, we're gonna put our 100 ohm resistors back in here. We're gonna rebuild the combiner network. Oh, excuse me. And then we're gonna run it. And I wanna see what other pills are not firing because I'm sure and I mean this positively with no question in my mind. I'm sure there's a couple others in here that aren't good. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just be out these, uh, these two transistors. We'll see. Let me get this all cleaned up and put back together. So, <clears throat> one bath later, look at all the stuff that came out of that amp. All that shiny shit. It's all solder flick top of all of this. Just floating around trying to find a place to short out something and make somebody have an expensive bad day. Okay, well you should see my shirt. It's covered in the same shit. So, okay. Amp. It's much cleaner now. We got all the flux out of the way. Cleaned everything up. I personally, I'm liking how this looks now. Much, much cleaner. So now I'll take a Q-tip and I'll clean out all the pill pockets to get the excess heat sink out of, or heat sink residue that's out of them. And we'll start putting transistors back in and 10 ohms and 100 ohms and yeah. It was one sturdy. Then the, the flowery douche with the, the hint of vinaigrette and the fresh breeze of the salt ocean air flew through and douched it out. All over my shirt and all over the towel. Well, that was fun. So I got it all put together. And the one transistor that I left over here was the one that had a gain of 17, or 
night, no, it was 20, 20, 21, whatever it was. It went, pfft. As soon as I keyed it up, pfft. Test to get on the tester, so. Total of three dead soldiers out of this entire mess. But, uh, yeah, it's really cleaned up. Everything in here is the way it should be now. It's not all butchlified, I guess would be the best way to put it. Okay, so we're on 15 volts. I gotta fix the on-off indicator, in, on indicator LED still, but, hello, one, two. Shoot, wrong switch, there we go. Okay, peak, here we go. Hello, audio, hello, audio. Put about 100 and some from the derail radio into it. Hello. So, with 100 watts, it's disappearing off the end of the scale, just <laughs> over 1,000 watts. So right here, 40 and 60, that big hash mark there, that's 1,000, 12, 14, 16, 18, 2,000 watts. So, let's go ahead and see what it does. Hello. 800 bird and about 1900 peak, 2000 peak. So, if not, I'm not mistaken, this guy's got himself a motor mouth mall rig. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here on the storyline. Let's go up here, let's recertify the input tune. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. It's a scooch high, get a half a watt. I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. Hello, one, two. So everything inside the amps running nice and cool. Let's see, what are we getting out of it for amps at the moment? Hello, one, two, 175. Run that off of two of those HP switchers now. I am really impressed with those HP switchers. If you guys haven't had a chance, I did a whole YouTube video here not too long ago, just a couple videos back about um, these new HP switchers. They're not new, they're new to me. <clears throat> how we figured out how to hack them, all the information's there. Hands down, the best switcher that money can buy right now for what we do with radio. You guys will want to go look at it. It's the, DPS or DSP 1200. Yeah. Go watch the video before you purchase. Follow the instructions on the video that are provided. <sighs> All right, so now I've got a simulator motor mouth mall rig. And we gotta hook that four pill up. I'm gonna run the four pill into this thing and see what we get out of it for power. So let me reconfigure the workbench and we'll be right back. So let's turn that five water around. We're gonna make it read forward. Now, listen, I don't have a motor mouth mall rig on my workbench. I don't. And from what he tells me, his motor mouth ampl uh, radio produces about one watt worth of dead key. Oh, shoot, I turned the 16 pill off. About one watt worth of dead key. And we're looking at this meter here. And when he modulates, it goes up to about three watts. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. So I got the mic gain way down on the 2950. So we're dead keying one watt and we're swinging a three. So let's turn this back around. So it's reading in reverse back from the dummy load. We'll put that on one X. Now let me bring the four pill in line. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. About 250 to 300 watts coming out of the four pill with a 10 watt carrier. So go ahead, we'll turn the 16 pill on. About a 200 to almost 300 watt carrier. And we're gonna go down to 5X. So the needle's all the way here to the right, that's 5,000 watts. We're reading the middle scale, of course, so. 10s, 1,000, 20s, 2,000, 30s, 3,000, 40 is 4,000, right? Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. 
We're making 3,000 watts of power with about 300 watts of drive, which is really good. And that's the way this guy runs this thing, supposedly. It's just like that. I'm a little bit curious. I feel like I'm pressing my luck. We're back on 1X now. Hello. Hello, audio. Hello. We're going to let her nat naturally aspirate up to 500 watts of drive. And we'll see what happens. I bet you we get about 3,200, 3,300 watts. Hello, audio. Get the amp meter in play. Hello, audio. 32, 3300 watts. Hello, audio. I turn this all down like a motor mouth rig, though. Hello. Two and a half, three watts. Hello, audio. All right. Hello, audio. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. We call that a win. I love these little grill guards. Man, they make a lot of noise. Okay, so last thing I need to do now that this is all fixed, thousand percent back together, everything's tested, we're done. I gotta squirt this with a little bit of clear, make it look all pretty on the inside, and then I gotta take the fan lid or the lid, not the fan lid. I'm tired, man. It's been a long ass day. My phone has rang all stinking day to day. This has taken all day to change out four pills, five pills, four pills. Oh, and do this one job because of the phone. But that's Mondays. Mondays are always rough. Anyhow, take the lid and we got to, you know, tordor it with the tornado and uh, put the lid back on. So. Give me a minute and we'll be wrapping this up. As you guys know, and I'm just going over this so everybody else knows, the reason I spray just a little tiny bit of clear on everything is to help prevent corrosion. Well, in this particular environment, I'm doing it a little bit more to kind of help keep the dirt off of everything and maybe keep the solder splash from being so conductive. Maybe. I know that's a na na naive idea, but that, that is the thought. Is the reason that we clear these things the way we do, is to try and help with corrosion. But I'd like to believe that maybe spitzing this down with a little bit of clear is going to help keep it from getting so conductive. So, I just want to blow the dirt off the fans, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. Well, gentlemen, we're at the end of the show. The other thing I noticed is a couple of the fans on this thing weren't connected properly, so they weren't running. We'd turn the amp on, fans were not turning. So I figured out what, the, what it was, and it ended up being a broken wire. So now we got all four fans turning. This is fully repaired. This is fully repaired, fully tested, and ready to go. So I'm done. I'm gonna wrap this thing up. We're going to throw it in a box it's going to go home. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. But I don't get to be that without all you Patreon supporters. The end of this little scene is going to come the thank you reel with all my Patreon names on it. Shout out to uh, Penal Labs, XS, Siglent, McMahon, Bird, and Coaxial Dynamics. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching, and I thank every single one of you from the bottom of my heart for tuning in. We're on to the next project. Gentlemen, I said I'll see you. Click, click.